I want to thank Ronnie for the opportunity to be able to do this webinar. There's nothing that I'd rather do than to educate people about health and wellness and nutrition. My background is that I was USDA's national program leader for nutrition for the United States. I'm actually, uh, my PhD is in chemistry, and I worked in nutrition research for more than 25 years. I've authored a lot of different publications related to nutrition, um, and I wrote a white paper on obesity for the White House. So um, after I left USDA, I decided that I wanted my focus to be community-based nutrition education. Um, I, my personal mission statement is to be healthy and to be happy and to help others. So um, my goal tonight is to share with you some information that I think will be quite powerful and uh, so that you can make good choices with regard to your wellness and make progress towards your goals. Whenever I talk about nutritional products, I always use this disclaimer uh, that says that the statements in the presentation have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Products or ingredients discussed are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. And that's a standard disclaimer when we're talking about um, you know, nutritional support products. Before I get started, I think we have to agree on something, and that is that nutrition is the foundation for health. Um, our society doesn't necessarily, not everybody's aware of that. A lot of people are looking for solutions in other places, but really and truly, if you have good nutrition, it lays the foundation for your health. And the reason that it's so important is that vitamins and minerals are what we need for every single metabolic process in our body. Um, lots of times, you know, minerals are serving as cofactors. Um, unhealthy eating and physical inactivity actually account for up to 580,000 deaths per year, according to Health and Human Services. Wellness, as I think you would all agree, is much more than just the absence of disease. And, you know, we really want to have optimal health, right? We don't just want to, you know, get by. We don't just want it to be kind of neutral. We want things to be really good and to feel our best. And I think one of the most important points is the final point on this slide, and that is that many health challenges are affected by nutrition. Heart disease, diabetes, food allergies, cancer, digestive diseases, osteoporosis, obesity, all of those are affected by the food choices and the nutritional practices that we have. This is just a chart which shows a few vitamins and minerals. I always kid about the fact that, you know, I spent about 25 years doing nutrition-related research working on trace elements. So I was an expert on things like, you know, sodium, potassium, manganese, zinc, iron. And, you know, I, I only get to talk about it for a few minutes at a time. But I'm really passionate about it. And vitamins and minerals are absolutely essential for, the, you know, health and to prevent diseases. So in this particular instance, this slide's showing you you know, what good food sources are and what some of the, you know, activities are. So, for example, vitamin A, which is found in beta carotene, helps with your vision and it helps with growth and healthy skin and tissues. And good sources are, you know, things which, uh, which you might know, carrots, fish, liver, and eggs. So you can go right around this little circle and you're going to see some specific examples. And I always put this slide in to remind me to tell you that I do want people to get what they can in terms of good nutrition from their diet. I don't think that the answer is in taking a bunch of nutritional supplements and skipping the healthy foods. But I think as we progress, you're going to see that we want to eat the healthy foods, but we may want to supplement in addition. So essential nutrients, I always say to people, do you think you're getting enough essential nutrients? And people are like, I'm not sure what those are. Well, essential vitamins and minerals are those that you can't make. Your body can't synthesize them. So you have to take them in either through supplementation or through your diet. Now these nutrients are absolutely essential for life. So there's no negotiating here. If you're not getting these things, then you can't be as healthy as you'd like to be. I'm kind of excited because the um, Dietary Guidelines report has just come out, the scientific report, just in the last two weeks, in fact. And unfortunately, there, we continue to have a bunch of what we call shortfall nutrients. So where does all this data come from? Well, there's a study called the NHANE survey, and they actually track what people eat and the supplements that they take. And then they also do blood work and other clinical tests to see what the nutritional status is. 
And what we can see, just in terms of food intake, people are short on their intake of vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C, folate, calcium, magnesium, potassium, fiber, and even iron. So the, the, the report has not been finalized yet. On the right-hand side, you can see that over at NIH on Tuesday, March the 24th, they're going to have an open session. In fact, if you'd like to have the opportunity, they, you can actually put in a request to present three, three minutes of uh, oral testimony to say what you think about the, the, the draft report. There's a lot of very important things in the report, like they finally have come to the conclusion that eggs are not the enemy, and that's, I'm excited about that because I've known that for many years. But the things here that are listed in green, which have the little asterisk thing, are ones that are, are nutrients that are of public health concern because underconsumption is actually list, you know, linked to adverse outcomes. So, for example, shortages of vitamin D lead to all kinds of health concerns. Calcium, uh, bone health is going to be an issue. Fiber, we know that people that don't get enough fiber are at higher risk for colon cancer. So these shortfall nutrients, this isn't my opinion, this is data that's been collected and is collected periodically and that is analyzed so that we know what Americans are eating. Now this shows you how short we are. The last slide just listed the nutrients that are of a concern, but this particular slide shows us that 90% of Americans are not getting enough vitamin D and um, nine, around 90% are not getting enough vitamin E. About 50% are not getting enough magnesium and more than 40% aren't getting enough calcium. So it's very disappointing, you know, that we live in the country that's the number one country for osteopenia and osteoporosis, the United States. Um, but you can see that nutrient intake is below what they call the EAR. The EAR is the estimated adequate requirement. So even if you hit that target, unfortunately, you only have a 50-50 chance that it's going to be enough for you as an individual. So this is pretty alarming, and nutritional experts all agree that it needs to be addressed. So who's actually recommending that we use nutritional supplements? You know, I, I have the opportunity to work with a lot of physicians and other um, licensed health professionals, and I respect these individuals tremendously for committing, you know, to work with people, always wanting to improve people's health. But the unfortunate thing is um, some, of, some individuals are not really up to speed on these data. They don't realize that you can't necessarily get everything that you need from, a, from your diet. So nutritional experts support appropriate use of supplementation, just in general. And in fact, there's a JAMA publication which serves as a position paper for the American Medical Association that was published saying that, yes, people need a multivitamin. And in fact, if you're elderly above the age of 70, you might need to take two because of poor nutrient absorption. The American Dietetic Association also has a position paper on supplementation where they're counseling um, you know, dietitians to make sure that they have a conversation with their clients regarding uh, appropriate supplementation. The dietary guidelines have specific guidelines in there about which nutrients require supplementation. And then there are food pyramids from, you know, very well established nutrition research institutes, places like Harvard and Tufts, which are saying, yeah, we've got these food pyramids and on the actual food pyramid are recommendations for supplementation. I think it's really important for people to know that not all supplements are created equal. And my recommendation to people is always that they find a very high quality product line to work with. The analogy that I give is that if you were going to have a steak, is it better to go and get a steak at, you know, Applebee's or Murray Steaks or is it you think you're going to get a better steak at Ruth's Chris? Well, unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, <laughs> the fact is is that you are going to pay a decent price for a decent supplement. So if it, if it sounds like it's just too good to be true and the price is just terrific, there's a reason for that and I'm going to give you some specific examples. Scientifically based supplements are those which have ingredients that are on the grass lifts, which stands for generally regarded as safe. FDA doesn't approve individual supplements, but it does regulate ingredients and then final products. So you can always check the FDA website for more details on how that works. You want to make sure that a supplement has the right amount of the essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in the dose. And then you want to think about the absorbability or bioavailability because 
it really doesn't matter on what it says on the label. It really matters how much you can actually absorb in your body. So I did a lot of research over the years on absorption and bioavailability, and bioavailability just reflects the amount of nutrients that your body can use. So even if um, two of us, two individuals, took the exact same formulation, one of us might absorb it better than the other just because of whatever particular uniquenesses of our own systems. Bioavailability can be affected by the delivery system and also by the formulation. So calcium citrate versus calcium chloride, for example. I think the delivery system is the most important of those two things. And you can have an isotonic delivery system, which I'll talk about. That's really optimum. It's kind of like an oral IV. You can have capsules or you can have pills and tablets. And the pills and tablets have binders and fillers, and those can decrease absorption. And, you know, they also rely on stomach acid to be broken down. So there is a delivery system called an isotonic delivery system, and the brand name is Isotonics. And as I said, absorption really matters. You can see in these two particular um, x-rays that these individuals had whole tablets still in, in their gastrointestinal tract. And that's really not what, what we want. We really do want to see those things broken down so that the nutrients can be absorbed. So how, how do vitamins and minerals get absorbed? Well, there's, uh, it's called carrier-mediated um, shuttling, but there's, the bottom line is that there's a, a limited number of shuttles. Um, and the shuttles can be an ion, a protein, or a little molecule. And there's just a limited number of absorption sites. And vitamins and minerals, you know, they're basically waiting for these um, shuttles to, you know, taxi or ferry the important ingredient to the appropriate absorption site. So, you know, the people will wait around, but vitamins and minerals don't really wait around. So if there's not an appropriate shuttle, unfortunately it passes through the system and may not be absorbed. The top of the slide here shows the isotonics delivery system. And you can see that in as little as one minute, you're starting to see um, the solution is there. It enters the stomach and looks already as though it's chyme or a pre-digested um, material. And the pyloric valve simply opens up and allows the solution to get squirted into the small intestine where it's going to be absorbed. On the bottom, you can see that there's giving the example of a pill or a tablet. And here the pill's relying on the um, stomach acid to release its contents. And that can take 40 minutes or so. So it's much slower and much less complete. An isotonic formulation has a specific osmolality, and that's listed here. Um, you want rapid and complete absorption and the best bioavailability available. These isotonics you know, basically are effervescent formulations with a fruity flavor, so they're really palatable. And for someone like myself, one of the key things, because I work with a lot of people with unique needs, is that the following things are not added to isotonics. There's no wheat, soy, yeast, gluten, artificial flavors, starch, salt, preservatives, or milk. So I'm ready to talk now about these five key products tonight that I want to share with you, and that's the multivitamin, calcium, B-complex, a product called OPC3, and omega-3 fish oils. So when we talk about a multivitamin, we want to make sure that it's got four key things. We want it to be be pure, so we want pharmaceutical grade ingredients. We don't need any extra stuff there. We don't need binders and fillers and stuff. We want rapid absorption, and then we want adequate levels that are going to be supporting optimal health. The benefits of the isotonics are spelled out here for the multivitamin. And, you know, I can read them to you or you can just read them, but the bottom line is that a multivitamin is really important for everything. A lot of times people will come to me with a particular health challenge, and nine times out of ten I'm going to tell them to start with a multivitamin. But Nancy, my blood pressure is elevated. Start with a multivitamin. But Nancy, I'd like to lose weight. You need to start with a multivitamin. But Nancy, I have cardiovascular risk factors. You need to start with a, health, with a multivitamin because it supports all these different systems in the body. It's going to help with metabolic functioning, and certainly it's going to be an insurance policy for any deficiencies that we might have in our diet. If you don't have the right vitamin and mineral balance, then you're not going to have the right balance of electrolytes in your system. And if you don't have the right vitamins and minerals, you're not going to be able to metabolize fats and carbohydrates. 
So you can't maintain a healthy weight without it. So all of these different characteristics, these benefits that are listed here are super important. So I like to tell people that a multi is the foundation for good health, and there's absolutely no benefit to taking more than a single dose. So, you know, you can get a 90 serving bottle or a 30 serving bottle are shown in that particular picture. And, you know, people, it's funny that we expect to have like dramatic instant results. A multivitamin is, is the kind of thing that you may not notice dramatic results like in a week, but it sets you up for long-term success. And consistent usage is absolutely critical for you to be able to get the great results that you want. People that I coach will know that I always say, small steps in the right direction will yield big results over time. And so I always ask people to make a 90-day commitment to their health. So, you know, I would encourage somebody to start with a 90-serving bottle of multivitamin and then assess and keep track and see where they how they feel at the end of three months. Now, I'm not here to bash any products, but I do want to just show you how to read a label and so that you can appreciate the value of what I've shown you with the isotonic um, multivitamin formulation. These are two popular products. One's an adult product and one's a child's product. But you can see for the product on the top, they've got a lot of different uh, food colorings in there. They've got hydrogenated palm oil, which is certainly you know, not considered to be a healthful ingredient. Talc and titanium dioxide. It's also got soy in it. Some people can't tolerate that. And then on the bottom, for the kids, um, they have these uh, dinosaur eggs. The first ingredient is sugar. The second ingredient is sugar. Then they've got calcium carbonate, some coconut oil. Then we go with water, some gum arabic, more calcium. Now we go for wax, carnauba wax. And if you go to the very bottom, we've got beeswax. Now I know that they're trying to make something that has a texture that's appealing to kids. They want it to be like an egg. But um, I just don't think that it's necessarily what, it doesn't necessarily contain all the ingredients that we'd love to see for a kid. And it's got a lot of stuff that we don't need, like, you know, starch and beeswax and carnauba wax and stuff. This is just to remind me that they, the company also makes a multivitamin for dogs. And they're just saying he's one of the boys. Make sure he gets his vitamins too. So calcium is another really important nutrient. There's 20 million people in the United States that have osteoporosis and 1.3 million people suffer fractures annually. The goal, of course, is to stop bone loss by increasing bone mass and strength, and contributing factors to poor bone health are things like smoking, low calcium intake, and vitamin D deficiency. Now, if you want to build bone, you can't just intake calcium. You have to have other ingredients. You've got to have vitamin D3. You also need magnesium. And you're going to also need boron. So when people say to me, hey, you know what, I'm good. I just take a Tums. You know, I've got like 1,000 milligrams of, of uh, calcium. Well, that's, that's fine, but you don't have the other ingredients. And you can't absorb 1,000 milligrams of calcium all at once. So the Calcium Plus does support strong bones and teeth. Um, of course, you're going to have to combine exercise, you know, to build bone density over time, uh, weight-bearing exercise. Um, it helps with blood pressure. It eases the discomfort of PMS by 50%. It reduces fine lines and wrinkles. What woman doesn't want that? It helps with pregnancy and lactation and growth in adolescence. And of course, it's going to help with weight loss too because calcium can help to maintain healthy blood sugar levels and it can help to actually lower weight and boost metabolism. Now, our formulation that the company provides has 375 milligrams of calcium per serving. And that's perfect because you can only absorb about 400 milligrams at a time. If you were to take 1,000 milligrams at once, you wouldn't even absorb 375. You need the optimal blend of calcium, vitamin D3, magnesium, vitamin C, and boron. And unlike calcium tablets, the isotonic calcium doesn't rely on stomach acid for absorption. Sometimes when people take calcium tablets, they get an upset stomach and they're like, oh, I don't want to take calcium, and then compliance is not good. This does not upset your stomach. It's got a citrusy flavor, so compliance is actually excellent. The third product is Isotonics B Complex. It's actually called Activated B Complex. And, you know, B vitamins are incredibly important. Um, I think that they're like um, one of the most underutilized things in terms of improving people's overall feeling of wellness. 
they promote cardiovascular health. They help with cognition, and that's why, you know, people, when they're feeling a little bit slow or um, want to have better focus, uh, B vitamins can be great and certainly are a much healthier alternative than, you know, drinking Monster or some of these drinks that are out there. Uh, deficiency of folic acid, B12 and B6, uh, can lead to fatigue. Um, but B vitamins can help with healthy stress levels and improve maintenance of mood and um, more resilience and also with healthy levels of serotonin. So who doesn't want, you know, good levels of the feel-good brain chemi chemicals? The, the question I get sometimes is why, why would we want to use a B vitamin complex, you know, supplement daily? Well, again, they can't be made by the body. And B vitamins are critical for like every metabolic function and they really need to be replenished frequently. Um, in fact, they're water soluble so they have to be replenished every day. And B vitamins are easily depleted by different stressors and even, you know, affected by your sleep hormone cycles. This slide is just here to remind me to tell you that these nutrients really should be taken in combination. People will sometimes say to me, well, Nancy, you did research on B12 when you worked for USDA. What do you think about taking a B12 supplement? My recommendation is that people take B vitamins as a complex. There are some, you know, specific instances where an individual might benefit from taking an individual B, but 99% of people will do better if they use these nutrients in combination because of the way the B vitamins work together to achieve their goals. Now, we have what we call reduced B vitamins, and I want to make sure that you understand that in this case, less is more because it doesn't mean that there's less of the B vitamin. Um, reducing it simply means it's, you know, a chemical term. We've got oxidation and reduction. Reducing it means that your body doesn't need to do any extra work to make the B6 or the B12 available for your body to absorb it and use it right away. So when you see reduced B vitamins, what you want to remember is that it refers to how much more easily your body can use the ingredient, not that there's less of the B vitamins in the formulation. One of the things I'm most excited about is that the company has made a concerted effort to switch over the form of folate. Now, you, you may have heard of folic acid and be aware of the concerns for that during pregnancy and so forth. But what we want to do is we know that a certain percentage of people, 60% of people, have a genetic enzyme defect which means that they can't convert folic acid to the active form, which is what we call the methylated form, you know, um, for the body to use for homocysteine metabolism and for production of neurotransmitters. So instead of giving it to the body as folic acid or folicin, instead we actually are putting in the form 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, and that's called 5-MTHF, and that means that you can absorb it immediately. And that's absolutely great, you know, if you have the defect, I actually have that genetic defect personally. Um, but even if you don't have it, you know, it's certainly an advantage because you don't have to get tested, everybody's going to be getting the right form. Fourth product I wanted to talk about is a product called OPC3, and it's the number one selling product for the company. And it's an interesting story, it's, it's more potent than vitamin C or E, they've used it in Europe forever. And when I actually was the program leader for nutrition, we published a database on the OPC content of foods. And we did that because they're anti-atherogenic, so they help to, to avoid cardiovascular disease. Uh, they're anti-art carcinogenic, and they're anti-inflammatory. And I, before I knew anything about this company, I knew about OPCs. And they, we see a synergistic effect when you take multiple antioxidants. So the person that introduced me to the company was a good friend my, uh, and my veterinarian. Uh, and she introduced me and she said, we have this great product, OPC3, that I think you might want to learn about. And I said, oh, you mean oligomeric pronthocyanidins? She said, how would you know that? <laughs> and it was simply because um, we published this database on the OPC content of foods. So uh, OPCs help with improving circulation. They're natural vasodilators. They improve skin elasticity. Um, because they help with collagen. Um, pycnogenol, uh, which is one type of oligomeric parenthocyanidin, actually is a natural COX and LOX inhibitor, so it reduces inflammation. They can strengthen capillaries, so it's great. They help improve visual acuity. They can help with stress and joint flexibility. There's 
five key ingredients in the OPC3. There's pycnogenol, which I'm going to talk about specifically. There's grape seed extract, red wine extract, and you know people always say, well, can't I just drink extra red wine? This is a lot more concentrated. <laughs> You'd have to drink a lot of wine to get the equivalent of one dose of OPC3. There's bilberry extract and citrus bioflavonoids. The pycnogenol I'm going to call out specifically because it's made by a company called Horfog, and we actually have an exclusive license with them for uh, the production of isotonic capable uh, pycnogenol. It's a really unique combination. Um, they, they, these come from a, a forest in um, France. It's maritime pine bark. It's agriculturally sustainable. And um, it's clinically studied pine bark. So if you just go out and buy, oh, I'm going to go buy some pine bark, it's not the same as pycnogenol. This is absolutely the most researched pine bark extract available. And I just want to comment that one of my very favorite things about MarketAmericaShop.com Nutrametrics is that they always go for very well-researched ingredients. They're very focused on scientifically based and clinically proven ingredients. And they have a top-notch scientific staff, and they are very focused on quality assurance and quality control, which is super important to me. Now, uh, pycnogenol is a really powerful antioxidant, so it's going to you know, scavenge any free radicals in your system. It promotes the normal production of endothelial nitrous oxide, so it's great for heart health. And it's really great anti-inflammatory and good for your skin. And um, it's just a terrific product. But when you combine it with the other four ingredients to get a total of 125 milligrams of bioflavonoids, then you get a really unique formulation. And again, we have the only isotonic formulation because we have an exclusive license. Now, the loading dose it, with this product for the first 7 to 10 days is double the normal dose. So a regular dose is one teaspoon per 150 pounds of water in two ounces, I mean of weight in two ounces of water. The loading dose would be double that. So now I recommend that people measure this out in a measuring teaspoon and just pour it into a cup and then measure up the appropriate amount of water and add it. Don't try to mix it in the cap that comes with the bottle. Now if you have an inflammatory challenge, you might need to stay on a higher dose for a longer period of time. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. This is the only product which is weight dependent. Multivitamin, everybody needs the same amount, whether you weigh 100 pounds or 300 pounds. Calcium, everyone needs the same amount. But OPC actually goes into every cell in the body, and you want to make sure that you're taking enough. Um, one of the physicians that I work with, we always talk about the fact that the most expensive supplement is the one that doesn't work. And if you're not taking enough, you're not going to get the results that you want. If you don't do the loading dose, it's going to take two or three weeks to get up to a level where it's going to really be impacting your health. So it's really in your best interest to make sure you start and use the, pro the products as explained. Now there's published research that goes with the OPC3. Now, they're not going to do that for every product because it's just not feasible. And certainly for things that are naturally occurring, things like vitamin C or vitamin D, they, I mean, they can't get a patent on that. But um, they did do um, some work with OPC3. They did several trials, clinical trials. And in one, they demonstrated um, that OPC3 is more bioavailable than an equivalent mixture in the tablet form. So this, you know, intellectually and intuitively, we know that's true. But they actually provided us with a study that shows it. So the dark red is for the isotonic formulation. And the lighter orange shows the tablet formulation. Exact same makeup. But you can see that the, uh, with the isotonic, it was, went into the bloodstream much more quickly, went down a little bit. And if you look at the area under the curve for the red, you can see that it's not only more quickly absorbed, but it's more completely absorbed, which I think is very important. They also did a study that was done in angiology because they wanted to look at the cardiovascular benefits. And they also, in that study, reported a 52% reduction in CRP, which is a marker for inflammation. So, you know, this is pretty terrific for people who were looking for an alternative. For example, maybe they don't want to have to use prescription medications. They don't want to have to use NSAIDs or they don't want to have to use steroids. And they don't want to have the, the, the side effects of the, some of the things that you see, you know, with regard to gastrointestinal health from using products. So these are all natural plant compounds. It's a water-soluble extract. 
There are about eight companies out there that offer what I call a knockoff product, and I don't mean that as a criticism, it's just that it's not the same as OPC3. Some of them don't contain all the same ingredients. None of them have isotonic capable pycnogenol because, again, the Market America and Shop.com has an exclusive license. And, you know, those, all of them have been um, submitted for independent testing. Most of the brands are what we call hypotonic, which means that they're not going to be quickly absorbed. And um, I always just say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Most of those companies are what I would call one-trick ponies, which means that they only make an OPC. But you look at um, our company, and what you're going to see is a, a wide range of isotonics. In fact, the company will make whatever they can as an isotonic. Um, some things that have herbs in it, they can't because it wouldn't be palatable. But the reason that they do it is they know that it offers a significant advantage from a health perspective. Um, these other companies that are making the knockoff, they just, they, they're like, oh, there's, there's this other company and they're making a lot of money with this OPC3 and so, you know, um, we're going to make it and sell it for $5 less. And for me, it's, you know, it's just silly, but I want you to be aware of it because when, you, when you're looking online, people need to know what the other options are out there. Also, sometimes, you know, people have questions about it. The advantages are spelled out here, you know, and sometimes when I talk about this product, I almost feel like it's too good to be true because it addresses so many different things. But I'll just share a couple of specific examples. One is that I have arthritis at all three levels of my spine and I have a herniated disc. And um, that was why my veterinarian introduced me to the OPC3. And my personal story is that I'm now um, very capable and I've started doing, you know, walking and running and I'm able to function very well and I don't have the pain that I did. Um, and so it's been terrific. Um, I have a lot of people whose cholesterol levels um, improve significantly on this product. Um, people whose blood pressure drops because it's a natural vasodilator. Um, women who report in significant improvements in menstrual cramping and abdominal pain um, and infertility. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's, it's an interesting product and um, it offers a lot of advantages. It helps to support blood glucose levels. It'll keep them stable for four to five hours which is great, especially for those of us that are trying to follow a low glycemic diet. And a lot of times when we talk about fertility, we don't um, specifically call out what a gentleman can do to, to you know, see an improvement, but um, OPC3 in a couple of publications was specifically tested and it actually helps to increase and support healthy sperm quality. People use it all the time for allergies or coming into allergy season. so. You know, it's just, it's a pretty cool product, and I would invite you to learn more about it. Again, the key features, it's the only isotonic capable uh, pycnogenol. It has excellent antioxidant defense, defense, and it supports cardiovascular health. And it's just, it, it addresses a wide range of health uh, benefits. There's several different products that actually contain it. I spoke about the product on the left, which is the OPC3, the conventional. There's a kid's version of the product. It's called the DNA. Uh, product line. And on the right, there's what we call a beauty blender skin health product, which is pretty terrific uh, because it contains other ingredients to help improve, you know, enhance collagen formation and so forth. So uh, I, I would invite you to learn more about any of the products. There's also a joint support formula which contains the pycnogenol. There's a daily essentials kit which contains four, the, all four of these products that I've just spoken about. And the reason that I like to present this is that I think regimens are really important because any one product can be good, but when we have the opportunity to take things together, um, then it's a huge advantage. There's also a huge, you know, time, you know, savings and cost savings. Um, so it can come in individual bottles, 90 serving bottles on the top, or you can buy packets where it's one dose of each of the things um, just in a packet. It's very convenient, for example, for travel. So I want to just talk about one other product, and I appreciate your uh, patience with me. I'm going to talk about omega-3s because everybody's talking about them. And I want to make sure everybody understands that fats are really important. You know, we kind of got sold a bill of goods starting in the 70s with, you know, everybody should eat low-fat diets, and then people were trying to eat no-fat diets. And, you know, fats are really important to satisfy your hunger, and um, they're important for healthy hair and skin. And inclusion of healthy fats actually can help with appetite control and speed up weight loss. Plus, you have to have a certain amount of fat in your system to be able to manage with the fat-soluble vitamins. 
So omega-3 fatty acids are known because they help to reduce inflammation, and there's two main types. There are long-chain fatty acids, and, you know, that's icosopentanoic acid and docosohexanoic acid. We're just going to call it EPA and DHA. And they're plentiful in cold water fish. And um, then there are short-chain fatty acids, including alpha-linolenic alpha acid, and that's what's found in plants such as flaxseed or borage. Now, Americans have a lot of inflammation, and the reason is in part because we're not consuming as much fish as we once did, and we're now eating corn-fed beef. So if we ate grass-fed beef, then the beef would contain higher levels of omega-3s. But most of the beef, unless you're buying organic today, is corn-fed. And that's going to be true of pretty much all the meat that we're buying. So that's part of the problem. Now the ratio of omega-6 to 3 should be 2 to 1. And omega-6s are actually what we call pro-inflammatory, but you need a certain amount of inflammation like for healing in your body. So our goal you know, is to not have a ratio of 20 to 1 like we do now. We'd like it to be 2 to 1. So the only way to achieve that is to either increase the omega-3s or decrease the omega-6s. Well, omega-3s are really important for heart health, and the EPA and DHA help with that. Alpha-linolenic acid, only 5% of it converts. So people who are like, you know what, I don't eat fish, I'm vegetarian, I'm only going to go with the borage oil or the flaxseed oil, they can maybe reduce inflammation a little bit, but they're not going to be able to get the heart-healthy omega-3s they need. Omega-3s are so important that FDA actually allows a health claim for them. And they, get, they allow health claims for a very limited number of nutritional support products. They do for calcium as well. But, you know, this is really huge. And the American Heart Association actually has a position paper where they spell out how much EPA and DHA you need just for good cardiovascular health or to reduce triglycerides. The average American consumes as little as 0.1 to 0.2 grams of that EPA and DHA a day from food. So you can see why there's room for, to consider supplementation. I included this reference in case somebody wanted to be able to look up the position paper. Penny Chris Etherton wrote this. It was in circulation in 2002. But you can just Google American Heart Association Omega-3, and I'm quite confident you'll find the information. Now, people tell me all the time they're just going to eat fish. I'm going to just cut to the chase here and tell you that you're going to have to eat an 8-ounce serving of salmon. Cost you about three fifty on sale. If you want to get uh, it from tuna, you'd have to eat four cans in a day. And I'm not even going to talk about, you know, the mercury and other challenges with canned fish. So we're not. <laughs> that's not the. That's not the answer. <laughs> but with a dietary supplement, you can not only achieve it easily, but it's going to be more affordable for you to get in the, you know, the recommended amount of EPA and DHA. Now, omega threes help to maintain normal cholesterol levels. They help with healthy blood pressure, um, blood flow, triglyceride levels, and they help to reduce inflammation as well. So they help to promote healthy levels of C-reactive protein. So you can see that there's going to be a lot of benefit. It can even help with not only your heart or your complexion, but with lubrication for your eye and, ear, and tear production. Um, so, you know, it also, omegas can help with uh, low light visual acuity, and as I get a little older, I notice that, you know, it's, I'm, I'm fine if it's pitch dark or if it's um, bright out, but as, as it's dust, you, you, know, you notice now. Now, what makes an omega particularly high quality is if it's high purity, and that means that it comes from small cold water fish. You don't want an omega that's coming from tuna or some big fish because small fish get eaten by medium fish, get eaten by big fish. So you want to make sure that it's the smallest fish and the, the company uses um, anchovies and sardines. And you also want to make sure that it's molecularly distilled because that helps to remove impurities, you know, um, heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides. You want it to be at least 50% active ingredients. So many people bring me omegas and they're like, oh, look how much it's got in it, Dr. Nancy. I go, well, look how much of that's EPA and DHA, 20%. You want it to be 50% or more. And you'd like that ratio to be 3 to 2 or 1 and a half to 1. And an omega that you get or see that doesn't contain vitamin E as D-alpha tocopherol is going to run the risk of becoming rancid. So this is just an example of another brand of omega, but I want you to particularly pay attention to the suggested use. 
it says to take one soft gel daily with a full glass of water with a meal. But let's go up and take a good look at what's actually in this product. The total fat is 1.5 grams. The um, total amount of uh, fish oil is 1.4 grams. Now, how much of that is omega-3s? Only 330 milligrams. So less than, you know, if, to reduce cholesterol, we recommend 3,000 milligrams. So you'd have to take 10 of these soft gels, maybe nine. But the point is that the other part that's dis, you know, disappointing is that they've got omega, the other omega fatty acids in it. We don't need extra omega-6. We don't need omega-9s. So we really want a product that is focused on omega-3s. So the other thing is that look at the size of the fish they used. We've got pollock, cod, and salmon. We don't have anchovies and, you know, small fish. This is the product from uh, the omega-3 from the Heart Health Program with MarketAmericaShop.com. And so what you'll see is that the fish oils here, if you look at the bottom of the slide, total 3,000 milligrams. 900 milligrams is EPA and 600 is DHA. So you've got the appropriate ratio of 3 to 2 for the EPA to DHA. And then you've got a very small amount of other omega-3 fatty acids there. But they're all omega-3s. There's no omega-6. There's no omega-9. And, you know, sometimes people say, oh, the, I, the, gel, the gels are a little big. Well, here's the deal. They're actually, they uh, add a little bit of lemon oil to them. So one of the things that you can do is just to pierce it, you can just squirt it onto your salad as salad dressing. It doesn't taste bad at all. So that's another option for people. Another quick trick is to know that and you can take it to test the quality of an omega. Go ahead and put it in the freezer. If it's all oil, of course it won't freeze. But if it freezes solid, then you've got a lot of water in there. And people don't call that out on the label. So, you know, the bottom line is that for general good heart health, you would take two soft gels a day. And if you'd like to reduce, you know, work on reducing triglycerides per the American Heart Association recommendations, you would take four of the soft gels per day with this system. So this, uh, there's a wellness kit that contains multi B, B complex and omega-3s. But, you know, to wrap things up for you tonight, I really appreciate you joining us for this. Um, I think everybody should consider a multivitamin. It's a really inexpensive insurance policy. I think there are a lot of advantages to scientifically based, clinically proven products. You want to make sure you've got the appropriate amounts of key ingredients. The isotonic delivery system provides rapid and more complete absorption. And you know, it's really hard to compare a label for a tablet to an isotonic because you're going to get much, more, much greater enhanced absorption with the isotonic. Um, you know, the surveys are very clear, and they've shown for many years that Americans need to be concerned about shortfall nutrients. People aren't getting enough vitamin D, calcium, potassium, iron, sodium. Uh, I'm sorry, iron, <laughs> magnesium. Um, sodium and, and saturated fat are our problem nutrients with overconsumption. People want to be... Uh, following the American Heart Association recommendations to make sure that you're getting enough omega-3s and a high quality omega-3 fish oil can really help with your cardiovascular health. So tonight what we highlighted were five different products. We talked about multivitamins, calcium, B vitamins, and OPC3. And there's two, you know, two kits on the left there that, that address that. We call those daily essentials. And then, you know, on the right is a kit that has B vitamins, multivitamin, with or without iron, and then omega-3s. So, you know, I would say whoever invited you to join the webinar, you might want to learn more about these products. And I, I would encourage people to take as a homework assignment uh, the opportunity to learn more about shortfall nutrients. You can just Google Dietary Guidelines, Guidelines 2015 Shortfall Nutrients, and you're going to be able to see that we didn't talk about everything tonight. Um, so there's plenty more to learn and to benefit and to, as Ronnie said, um, education allows you to be proactive about your health and your wellness. Just going to close, uh, you know, there are some ice, uh, really nice infographics that are available that can help you to learn more. Um, it's great to hear all the science and the details, but sometimes it's just great to have something that you can just refer to quickly and see what the results are and see what kind of an impact these products can have for your health. So I'm going to just close by suggesting that each of you can make a difference. Um, it's really important to lead by example. Uh, I know that 
many of you may be health professionals or wellness coaches, and people want people will do what you do. They want to know that you it's a you know that you have to work to be healthy too. It's great to eat well, and then we want to supplement sensibly. Again, I'm a big fan of getting what you can from your diet, but you know the data are in. The nutrient content of foods is not the same today as it was 25 years ago when I first started working. We want to educate others and share information because knowledge is power. And I think it's really important to help others to create a healthy lifestyle. Don't ever judge somebody because everybody's you know, following their own path and everybody has their own challenges. But uh, through encouragement, I think we can, and education, we can inspire people to be their very best. And I'll just close by saying, I hope that all of you can be healthy and be happy. Thanks very much for joining us for the webinar.